Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this weekly Svelte video, we're going to be diving into a really neat feature in Svelte that you may or may not have seen before. Now, uh, I've been recently hammering out some, some mono repo stuff over here. So some of the packages that I've been working on have uh, not been <laughs> moving forward as much as I'd like because I've been doing so much organization. And you can even see I have uh, comments and underlines and squigglies. And, and trust me, we'll, we'll take a look at some code that's not as rough and rugged as this is. But what we're going to be doing in this video is talking about a really neat feature in Svelte, which allows you to do recursive components. Like, what does that mean? So let's take a look at a good example here. And this example comes straight from the Svelte tutorial, which let me tell you is one of the best things about Svelte. Um, not the language, obviously, but uh, the documentation. Nobody figured out documentation like Svelte did because there's a built-in tutorial with a REPL that allows you to hammer out some concepts in the REPL while they walk you through it, and it's incredible. This thing is the best. So what's, what's the idea here? The idea here is that you can recursively call a component. Now, people do this in React because React components are functions, and you can call a function. Uh, just like you would a recursive function in normal JavaScript, right? And you might be thinking, well, how do I do that in Svelte if they're not functions? Well, there's this really neat component called the Svelte colon self or the self component that allows you to recursively call the same component. Now, this comes in handy. Let's say if you have a data structure like this, you have an array and then maybe you have some nested information in here and you might, you, you maybe you're not sure how many levels deep this goes, you know, how deep does this go, right? Uh, you can see it's of varying degrees. So this kind of structure, you might be thinking, well, how do I how do I do that? If I can't account for how deeply nested the structure of data is, that's a perfect use case for a recursive rendering of a function, right? Recursive functions in JavaScript, typically, it's a function that calls itself as in, uh, I have this thing. And I'm going to call myself and I'm going to do this thing. And, and the reason why this works for deeply nested data where you're not sure how many levels there are or how many levels a quote can be, or maybe you just want to keep the code really nice and neat and not have like four nested uh, each statements if you don't have to. Well, this is just super cool because we can render a component from inside of itself very easily using svelte colon self. OK, so let's go ahead and, and first what we're going to do is we're going to run down this example here and we're going to uh, do the tutorial here just very briefly. And then I'm going to show you how I'm using this in the level up tutorials Svelte toy component that I'm making. And then I'll talk just very briefly about Svelte toy and what it hopes to accomplish. OK, so here we have a folder or an app and the app imports a folder. And if you scroll down, we have this nested data structure, which is a file system. And then we say, hey, call this folder, okay? And in this folder is going to live a file. Now the folder component itself is nothing crazy here. We just simply have a span. You can expand or, you know, changes the icon there. And then when you expand it, it toggles the state. And when that toggles the state, that toggles the files below it, okay? Now, a folder may contain another folder, but we don't know that. In the nested data structure, if you look, we have here's the root, all right, and then we have a name for the folder, and then the files, okay, and this is just a file, right? But what happens if we, in this example, have a folder with some files and a name? Well, well this has a name, right, but it, it's, not a, it's not a file. How do we how do we know this is a folder and not a file specifically besides the fact that there's no extension on it but that's that's not something uh, that you'd want to rely on right uh, the reason being is that there's another property in this object that has files with an array so we can say if files contains or it will we can loop over files and say if the individual file here contains another object named files, then we should actually render the file component itself again, or the folder component, I should say, not the file component. So if the folder contains another folder, 
indicated by the fact that there is a files array, then we should render the same component that will then check to see, hey, do I have a file or do I have another folder? And this can go deep. So let's go ahead and head to the folder component here where we're saying, okay, if this is expanded, so we can see here that we'll have a todo.md and we'll, we'll tweak this and say each file as file. Okay, so we're iterating over the files and then if file.files exists. So if there is a nested folder inside of this folder, then we should show the folder. To do that, all we need to do is reference the same component that we're in right now. And again, I'll show you this in another context. That way we can hammer it in a little bit. We'll say svelte colon self, um, not selfie emoji, just self. And then we will say brackets like this, and we can spread all of the files into here. We can do that via dot, dot, dot file. Okay. And then we can do it like this. Now you can see instantly, and this is the, the brilliance of having a Svelte repo re, REPL like this is that we can have this instantly work right before our eyes. And you can see a nested folder structure automatically works. And this is great because folder.svelte, it's not unlocking a new component here. All it's saying is this home component, right, is the same component as important work stuff. It's the same component as this one, as the same component as dogs, but these can be contained within itself. It's really super neat. Now, with anything, uh, with anything recursive, you got to kind of be um, prepared for the potential of an infinite loop uh, in some regard. But here we're doing that by checking to see if file.files, then we render the self, okay? If there is not a file.files inside of here, we're not going to render the self. Because if you render the self here, it could just recursively render itself forever and ever and ever and ever. So let's uh, not worry about that because this is now working and you can see if we even modify the data. So inside of here, if we wanted to just copy and have some nested more data in here, this is just going to work instantly. You can see now inside of important work stuff is now another folder. And this new folder is called quarterly results. And inside of that is a quarterly results file. And again, quick and dirty, just copy and paste in here. This will work as much as you want it to, as long as the data structure uh, follows that pattern that we talked about throughout this video. Look at that. It's awesome. Um, and again, you could do this in React. You could do this in Vue. This is not like anything revolutionary or anything like that, but it's a feature you might not have known about. And it's a feature you might not have used before. And it's incredibly easy just to call yourself to say svelte colon self, pass in the props, just like we would anything else. Now, how are we using this in a different context? So this is svelte toy. Uh, my name is not John. This is just some demo data. And svelte toy is a little tool that I'm building here that pops open a window. And again, this is it's undergoing a lot of changes right now. So this is not the <laughs> this is not the UI. But let me tell you what this thing is, is it's a way to modify your entire state. It's a development tool to modify the entire state in your entire application um, in one single one single place, right? You can toggle whatever. And so like if I were to say, hey, my name is Scott like this, you can see it updates in the site recursive or reactively without a whole lot of work, right? I want to click toggle is active. You can see I'm active pop in there. So this is really neat. And you can see here what we're doing is starting to get into recursively calling this component for nested data, because this is a problem that you would have if you have a state tree and you're not quite sure how deep that state tree goes or what it includes. Now we have a lot of work to do here to make this thing really full featured to accommodate for any different type of data types. As you can see, it's currently out, <laughs> outputting an array um, as an object here, which is why you see this zero here. But let's go ahead and I'll show you how I'm using this in context here. And you can ignore some of these red squiggly lines in this commented out stuff. I'm still deciding on what the UI should look like for this thing. Again, this is in very much flux. Um, but what we're doing here is we have a row component. That row component is for our data. So this is the up to date row here. My apologies here. I have uh, I'm working with some duplicate stuff here again. Like I said, I'm, I'm really shuffling this mono repo around right now, very much in flux. Um, but you can see here, one thing that we're doing here is this is the row component. The first thing we're doing is we're checking to make sure the value isn't null because uh, sometimes this data is coming in as null. 
um, that's something that we just have to, to worry about. Um, next, we're checking to see if the type of the value is an object. And now, right now, we're just saying, hey, if it's an object, yeah, I realize the pitfalls of checking to see if this thing is just an object. But um, this is where we take into account the recursiveness, because if this thing is an object, you know, an array is an object. If it's an object, that means that there's some nested data inside of here, and it's not just its own primitive. Um, you can see we're doing further checks, like if it's a type of string down here, just show the input. And if it's a type of Boolean, show a checkbox, right? That way we can have, if at your, if at any level, it's a, if, if at any level it's a string, we're going to get this input box. Or if at any level it's a Boolean, we're going to get a checkbox. Um, but if it's an object, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over it. Now we will be checking to see if this is an array, but right now we're just assuming these are objects again, rough and rugged. Um, what we're doing here is we're going to iterate over each of the values. We're going to grab the nested key and the nested value, and we're going to pass it into itself using svelte.self, passing in the key as the nested key and the value as the nested value. And then we're wrapping that whole thing in a div. Now you can tell this is being wrapped in a div, nested div, because we have a slight margin left on here. Now, if we want to make this more obvious, we can give this a margin left of something like 15 pixels, and we can give it a background of something fun here. If you don't know about these, I, I don't typically use these, by the way, but this is easier to type. We can do black and then do something like CC to give it some transparency. I don't often use hex values with transparency, but you can do it now in some browsers. You can see it looks a little bit like that. In fact, I don't know if CC was a good choice. Um, let's say, what is like something like nine, nine? Does that give us something more transparent? There we go. There we go. See, this is why I don't do this often. Um, but as you can see here now, you can see exactly where the nested data comes into play because each time it calls itself, it is going to do a recursive self component. So test is at the root level. It sees itself and then it sees another one. And if we want to see this thing in further action, we can look at the data that we're even passing into this toy input. And again, this whole thing is, um, there's going to be a lot of re renaming. At one point I was calling it state mang, which is a terrible name. Um, I, I'm very aware of that. <laughs> and, uh, wait, where's the state being defined here for our demo? Where is the state being defined? Oh, it is in the routes folder routes. If you don't know about this, you can actually develop, um, packages in Svelte kit and have it, uh, bundle it for you, which is really neat. So you can see we have a test array, which has an object inside of it, has another property, hi, um, hello, like this. Okay, here's some more. And if we wanted to, we could have a world. Oh, wow, look at that code, uh, whatever this thing is. And let's have an object inside of here. What is up? Okay, there we go. So I just added some more nested recursive data, and you're going to be able to see increasingly levels of less transparent black, but we're getting more and more. Hi, hello, hello. World is an object. It's recursive once more. It calls itself once more and has now indented that further level. Okay. So again, this tool, this looks, this looks very different than the version that it's on NPM right now, and it's going to continue to look different. I'm going to update this pretty heavily because I'm actually using this thing in our development process a lot right now, so I have a lot of needs for this. Um, but I do want to give proper credit where credit's due. This, the, the name of this and the look and feel of this was inspired by Meteor Tools, which is a tool that I really loved. And I'm going to be doing quite a bit to make this a little bit more like this, but I'm not going to be doing everything that Meteor Toy did. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to um, meet the needs of, of my Svelte components and my my uh, design system and everything a little bit better. Um, but this this thing was really neat and I liked having it in Meteor, so I'm building it in uh, Svelte. So this is available at Level Up Tuts, Svelte hyphen toy. Do not use it yet. You can see there's some stars and stuff on it. People, uh, I mean, Pikachu says it's under construction, so um, <laughs> he's, he's very accurate. But at the end of the day, you're just passing in writables as an array inside of the toy. And that thing is going to just output this lovely little interface that will continue to be improved upon. And I'll do another video once this thing is a little bit more usable and say, hey, everybody go use it. But I just wanted to give you an update on something that I'm working on and uh, at the same time show off a feature in Svelte that you might not be using. 
recursive component or a component that calls itself. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you would like to learn all about Svelte, Svelte Kit, and more, head on over to leveluptutorials.com. You can sign up to become a pro. You get a new tutorial course every single month, including our course on Svelte Kit, animating Svelte components, building Svelte components, and a whole lot of other cool stuff, including a new, uh, like I said, a new course every single month. We just had a great course from Ryan Alinska on Prisma uh, and I'm super excited to have um, Ryan do a course for us. We have all these great guest uh, content creators. Colby Fayok did a course on Next.js. Brian Douglas did a course on GitHub. And we have a lot of really exciting new courses to announce coming soon. So sign up for the year and you will save 25% and you will get a new tutorial course every single month. Again, we teach all kinds of stuff. So if Svelte's not your thing, uh, just check it out. We can We can teach any of these things. And if Svelte is your thing or you want it to be your thing, this is the perfect place to pick up some new skills. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.